Greetings, schools, and welcome to my mantle. <laughs> I'm back on deadline. Uh, I got my edit notes back from my editor about my second book, so I'm working on my second book. So I decided that I might do something a little bit more, a little bit more subdued, a little bit more chill. And so I was inspired by my friend and you know, spooky icon, Midge Munster. If you don't follow her, you definitely should be subscribed to her channel. You should follow her everywhere, okay? She's a spooky icon who often does videos about redecorating her mantle. Um, I decided to show you me redecorating my mantle. Now, as you can see, it is still set up here for uh, Valentine's Day. Still got a Valentine's Day thing going on here, which is super cute and I love it. And I was tempted to just leave it up because I was like, what should I do for Pisces season for my birthday? And I was like, you know, is this not my vibe? But I decided for Pisces season, I wanted to do a kind of dreamy, aquamarine, blue moon, nightscape kind of vibe. You know what I mean? I want you to look at it and think of dreaming because as a Pisces, you know, our head is in the clouds. And uh, it's my birthday this week, so uh, I was born on Pi Day. Maybe that's when I'll post this video. I don't know. But I was born on Pi Day, just like Albert Einstein and uh, Taylor Hansen. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do, unfortunately, is take all of this down. So let me give you a close-up view of it before I do that. All right, now let's take it apart. Look at this, isn't this so cute? This is a Victorian pop-up Valentine. So cute, already you can see it. You see how it like pops open like this? And then it shuts, just like that. It says to my Valentine, it's so cute. If you've been with me a while, you might know, you know, that I had to move around August um, this year. And I was, I was, I was really sad about it, honestly. And I love my old apartment a lot. It was really gorgeous. It was a beautiful old Queen Anne Victorian. Okay, I can show you the picture now since I don't live in it anymore. We lived on the third floor and the top floor, which used to be the servants' quarters. So it had a lot of funny little quirks about it, like there was an antique sink in every room. There was also this tiny little bathroom in our bedroom, which was the most convenient thing ever. Cause I gotta be honest, I got a bladder the size of a walnut and I am very well hydrated. So I wake up in the night to pee a lot. And it's kind of annoying to have to trek now all the way to the bathroom. But luckily we ended up in a very gorgeous apartment. And this house is even older than the last house. So even though I really love that house, it, I mean, it was beautiful. Our bedroom, we could see the ocean from our bedroom, which was incredible. But now we are in the most convenient location possible in Salem. We are in such a beautiful neighborhood of Salem. And my walk to work is a breeze. It's stunning. I can walk everywhere I want to go, walk to everywhere where I like to hang out with my friends, walk to all the shops that I like to visit. It's, it's really nice. And then the other thing that's great about this place is that I got a fireplace, baby. Um, the fireplace does not work, okay? No fires in the fireplace. It is what it is. Maybe someday I'll have a working fireplace, but for now, the appearance of a fireplace is good enough. And this the woodwork on this mantle, baby, is stunning. So I've been really enjoying, you know, redecorating the mantle with each turn of the season. So yeah, now we're doing this cute, dreamy Pisces look. Not 100% sure exactly what we're doing here yet. We're gonna figure it out together, baby, all right? Pause just to show Uma lounging in a sunbeam. Hi, <laughs> baby. Are you so cute? Yeah? Okay. All right, so. We got these cute like iridescent star lights on Amazon. Hopefully they uh, hopefully they work. <laughs> um, we're gonna find out. Oh good, there is a USB. I, I hate when I hate using battery powered lights because then you know batteries are such a waste. So I also never know what to do with batteries. I know you're not supposed to throw them out, but then like what are you supposed to do with them? All right, baby, can you see? It's the moment of truth. All right, let's see. Oh my God. Maybe if I, maybe I have to turn, maybe there's a switch. Maybe there's a switch, hold on. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, we got a twinkling effect, okay. I don't think I want twinkling. Oh, okay. 
we have just a constant being being lit effect. There we go. There we go. So I got these like morning glory garlands uh, off Amazon. I think they're super cute. I don't know if you can see. I'm bad at this. I need a cameraman. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I want to do just like one strand or if I want to double them up. Probably double them up, right? I feel like one looks too sparse. All right. And to attach these, I use these uh, little like mantle hooks that I got once again off Amazon. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I know. I don't like it either. All right. You know, what are we going to do? Where else do you go to find things like this? I don't know. I just, I didn't even know that these existed. I just looked it up on Amazon. I was like, I wonder if that's a thing. And sure enough, there they were. So we just bought them. All right. Anyway, enough excuses. We'll fluff it after. We'll fluff it after. Oh, somebody's here to help. Somebody's here to help. Should have seen that coming. How's that looking? <laughs> That's cute. That's definitely good. That's looking good for sure. All right, that's looking, I think that's looking pretty cute. What do you think? <laughs> I think it looks pretty cute. Now, here's the other thing. I have these lights here on the side. I have them uh, attached to an app on my phone, which is um, somewhere. Oh, my God. I have this video that I posted on TikTok yesterday that is blowing up to a level that makes me uncomfortable. Like, I was just a shit posting about time travel and um there's way too many views it's alarming every time i open my phone i feel a little bit nervous about it anyway we're not gonna look at that right now um what was i doing oh the lights all right excuse me what are you doing the lights we are going to adjust the lights so i have them set to this pink color because it it matched but i think we're just gonna go hey 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 hey, hey. we're not doing that now we have it set to this kind of like uh, like a yellowish light. I feel like it's pretty much the same, uh, you know, light color of light as the as the stars there. Now we can start decorating. All right. By the way, I'm also working on a little bat garland that I'm gonna hang from under here. I drew some bats. Um, but I'm gonna finish that after. I think you might have to move. I don't know. Would well, you think that this is? A good decoration? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No! <laughs> Why? Okay, I'll work. I'll start from the other side, all right? So I have this gorgeous antique silver tea kettle that I normally keep like some flowers in. So this is actually a really good representation of my life right now. It's all there. It's just... <sighs> Let's see how this looks. That's cute, right? I got this at Savers and I absolutely loved it. I saw it and it's handmade. It's got a signature on the bottom. It says Constance Talbot. So I don't know who that is, but I love this pot that she made here. Cool, it looks like a big moon with a face. I love things with faces on them. You know what I mean? So cool. So we got big moon with the face. Um, I feel like it might, <coughs> might work off, off to the side a little bit. It's very dreamy, very dreamy feeling. I right, got this photo, very nice blue photo from my friend Courtney Lightwitch. Uh, she took this picture. It says, behead the patriarchy on the bottom, baby. It's perfect. All right, vintage moon signs book. I feel like this one will be good. All right, we got two more blue books. We got this really cool edition of Dracula that I found at Savers. It's got these, it's even got like blue edged pages. It's so good. I love it so much. And it's got that great great old book smell. All right, and then we got this one, which I got from my friend, the Teacup Ghost. You can follow her on Instagram. She uh, collects like vintage glassware and, and vintage books and a lot of cute like vintage stuff. And uh, she sells some of it in store at Nocturne. So if you're ever visiting Nocturne, you can shop her stuff in store. But um, I'm not sure if she ships it out or anything. I don't know. Check her out on Instagram though. She, she finds really cute stuff. So she got this really cute book. It's uh, At the Mercy of Tiberius which I don't 
I don't know the book, but I just thought it was really beautiful. And I feel like this binding is really gorgeous too. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna lay this book down or have it up, but I also got this cute teacup from her. And in Nocturne, she had this displayed like up on the shelf with this cup on top. And I just thought it was so cute. How can I justify this purchase? And I was like, oh, I'll do a dreamy blue mantle for Pisces season for my birthday. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Plate with the three witches from Macbeth on there. Uh, very 70s, if you can see. They are, they're great. This baffling world. It's got a big foot and a UFO. Perfect. Now I want to be clear. I'm not a fan of H.P. Lovecraft. Don't love him. <laughs> I think he's, I get it. I get it. You know, kind of created a genre, right? But um, as a person and uh, as a person, very detestable. But this cover for this, um, the doom that came to Sarnath. This is the other thing that I can't stand about it. It's like the doom that, okay, anyway. What a blow hard. Anyway, uh, but that cover, that cover is sick, right? I had this one as a kid. It's got a great cover, spooky house, and then, you know, ghostly lady on the back. You might've seen this book before. If you have been here for a while, uh, this was in my antique haul video that I did um, in the summer. But this one is Idols of the Month. And this one's really gorgeous. You know, the cover is really gorgeous. You can see it's got this like, stunning gilding on it and all these little stars and the moon so very very on theme but this one has the most incredible illustrations inside this vivid color on it very amazing i got this one this one gave me real love witch vibes i really love this i got this little decanter at um salem fleet if you're if you're visiting salem make sure you visit uh salem fleet I'm gonna put the address over here, but it's in like a big old piano warehouse. So it's really cool. It's like a big old warehouse and um, there's tons of artists and vendors there. It's really, really cool. Definitely a must see. If you visit me at Nocturne, I can point you, it's really close to Nocturne. So if you do come to Nocturne, you can ask us where it is. We'll point you to it. But um, yeah, this is from Salem Fleet. I absolutely love it. You can see it's got like some gilding on the edge here. Really cute this deer skull that I actually found in a bear pit and it's all gnawed on. So the story behind this is that uh, I was in the woods and uh, I realized that I was in a bear pit where a bunch of bears lived. Uh, the bears were out for the day, luckily, but there were bones everywhere and they were all gnawed on. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure they were from bears. Um, Anyway, so yeah, this one I found, uh, you, if you can see, there's like, there's all these teeth marks on the antlers. They're all gnawed up. And uh, I thought that that was pretty cool. So I grabbed it and I, I took it home with me. I walked out of the woods, you know, holding this. And uh, nobody asked any questions because who's going to question a bitch walking out of the woods holding a skull like this? I got this set of skulls from an estate sale. And the house that this was in, they had a crazy collection of Christmas stuff in their basement. Like their whole basement was just filled with like vintage Christmas decorations. So I got some, some cute Christmas decorations cause I do like, you know, a little spooky vintage Christmas vibe. But then I was like, you know, damn, they're so into Christmas. If they were like this with Halloween, I'd be cleaning up right now. I'd be finding so much shit. So it's like, there's not any Halloween stuff, you know? I guess, you know, Christmas people and Halloween people, it's kind of, you know, cats and dogs, you know what I mean? Then I'm wandering through and I notice there's like this big metal, like, like locker closet thing. You know, what do you call that thing? There was like metal and it's got double doors. I don't know, I don't know. There must be a word for it. Anyway, um, I saw one of those and one of the doors was open just to peek. And through that little peek, I could see, you know, I could see spider webs, orange and black and purple. And, you know, I was like, oh, we found it, we found it. Um, so I opened it up and sure enough, there were a lot of vintage Halloween things in there. So I have some of the stuff, you know, over on my set. And then I have some, there were uh, some vintage Halloween die cuts. So I have those up on the walls. And there were these adorable vintage uh, skull candles. One of them is pretty burned. And then this one here, uh, less burned, but I love them both. And which one did I melt? 
this one. Uh, this one was pressed up against my like bubble lights when I had my mantle set for Christmas and I didn't realize it and uh, his face kind of melted, but you know, just adds, adds to the look, you know what I mean? So we're gonna put these up. Very spooky candle holder with a little like claw foot bottom. Um, I got this in an antique store a long, long time ago. Like I think when I was like a teenager. So I got this cute little guy. He's got some change in him. He is a, uh, a piggy bank and it says, I am a game kitty on the back. So uh, I have before like filled him up and um, taken him to the casino and I did not win anything. All right, so we have the Cosmic Connection here by our friend Carl Sagan, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, <laughs> which is also a great bar theme, right? I also have this cute dogwood teacup from my friend, Teacup Ghost. Um, so cute. It's got little feet on it. <laughs> and then there's little dogwood flowers all over it. So freaking cute. And I also just wanna say that her tags are so cute. They're little ghosts coming out of a teacup. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, the reason why dogwoods are my favorite flower actually has to do with the fact that I love telling stories. Because when I was a kid, I used to hang out on the playground during recess and I had a little area of the playground where I would tell stories, okay? And it was underneath a dogwood tree. And I would sit under the dogwood tree and that's where the kids who wanted to hear ghost stories during recess could come and hang out. And I would tell ghost stories literally every single day. And it, that's what I did. There were, it, you know, it evolved into some different things. There were, I ended up like a, I ended up watching a lot of X-Files and I created a kind of uh, task force to investigate things. Yeah, because it all started with me sitting under a dogwood tree, um, I just love dogwood and that's it. I have this, this baby that Michael got for me that has uh, different faces. <laughs> it's so creepy, I love it so much. I usually keep it on this one because I'm a Pisces and I relate to the one that's crying and I also just love that the tears are silver. Can you see them? tears are silver and they're so cute so um that's perfect perfect for our pisces season mantle isn't it oh god oh god we're between faces here okay yes these are antique victorian children's shoes um they are not haunted but you can see little outlines of feet inside of them so there's that So I drew these bats, a whole bunch of bats, all in varying stages of flying. Um, it was not really interesting, the drawing part. And um, I also drew them before I decided to make a video out of this. So the bats, I just kind of looked at a bunch of vintage illustrations, like just bat nature illustrations. And uh, I just drew bats in different poses. Pretty simple. So I'm going to outline them in um, micron pens and then we're going to do colored pencil and watercolor probably or maybe colored pencil and um acrylic depending on how i'm feeling all right i just kind of go with the flow i don't plan anything out i'm not i'm not a real artist okay this is just for fun i usually have like a paper garland on my mantle most of the time i get my garlands from bedlam supply co on etsy they make incredible garlands unfortunately I, for some reason i just really got stuck on the idea of having bats on this motif on this mantle motif so i couldn't get over it so i couldn't find a good like vintagey looking bat paper garland to hang at the bottom like kind of like you'll see it when it's done but i couldn't find a good vintagey bat one on Etsy and I was like, why don't I just make my own? I'm not the best artist, but I have fun drawing, you know, a little bit of art therapy. Now we have them all outlined. Now it's time to uh, erase all the pencil, right? By the way, this teacup is also uh, from Teacup Ghost. My friend Kate, how freaking cute is this? And there's like a little, little leafy motif in there. So adorable. Right, we got them all outlined. You can see I did like 
you know, a little webbing in the wings to give it a little extra detail. I think that that was like on one of the illustrations that I was looking at and I just like liked it. I thought it, I thought it looked spooky. Okay, um, so for colors, I think we're gonna start off, I picked like a bunch of like purples and blues, you know, since we're doing this kind of like blue theme. So I'm just gonna, just gonna start slapping them down, all right? Some of them need to get, some of them need to get sharpened. You're gonna have to trust the process on this, okay? I know it looks like shit right now. So I really love bats, obviously. I mean, I know, what spooky bitch doesn't? Back when we lived in Jersey, there was this guy, okay? He was called NJ Batman. And he like rescues bats, right? And he was doing an event one time and I just like found it by chance. I don't even remember how I found out about the event, but me and Mike were just like looking for something to do. And I don't remember how I found out about it, but I was like, oh, this guy is doing this like bat presentation. You can go and he's gonna talk about bats and then he's gonna take you out like bat watching. So I was like, I'm in. So we went, cause you know, we're down for anything. So we went and uh, it was even more incredible than I expected. He had, first of all, he did a whole presentation about bats and he was like educating people about white nose syndrome, which is a huge problem in the bat population, which if you don't know about that, it's like literally some person went caving, I think like in Europe somewhere and then came back and went caving in uh, upstate New York and brought this fungus that has been attacking all the bats, the bat population here. And the, it makes the bats like all disoriented and then they fly out during the winter. They like go out of their caves during the winter and freeze to death. And there's nothing for them to eat also because they only eat bugs. So they go out in the winter and they die. And uh, bats are very important to the ecosystem, you know? So the guy was telling everyone about the white nose syndrome, which was really sad for all the sweet baby bats. And then he had a couple fruit bats with him. So we got to feed the fruit bats, which was incredible. Got to give them little, little pieces of fruit. And fruit bats, if you don't know, they suck on the fruit and they suck all the juice out of the fruit. And then they like spit out the pulp. It was so cute. And then we went outside and we like watched the bats. It was amazing. So uh, it was super fun. And at the time I worked at my uncle's garden center in Staten Island and we would, it was in the summer. And in the summer, my uncle would go out to farms in Pennsylvania, like several mornings a week and get all of this like fresh produce. And, you know, as the week would progress, some of the produce, especially the fruits, like he would not sell some par fruit. So if the fruit even looked slightly wonky, he was just tossing it. So I went to the NJ Batman after the, after the presentation and I said, you know, will you take donations of fruit to feed the bats? Because the fruit isn't bad. It's just, you know, not up to my uncle's very discerning standards. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. So then I started bringing all of the like extra fruit every week to the, the bat sanctuary. And he would let me feed the bats. It was a dream come true. It was incredible. It was so cool. Um, yeah, it was really amazing. So for like a whole summer, I was just bringing all of this produce to the to the bat sanctuary and feeding all the bats. As much as I love, you know, where we live right now, I do dream about having my own house for many reasons, but high amongst them is the fact that I really want to have a bat house in my backyard so that I could see the bats. We see them out and about. I mean, this is Salem. Of course there's bats. There's bats all around. In the summer, if you sit outside at All Souls, which is the best bar in Salem, um, if you sit outside in the on the patio seating, there's all these bats that fly around the parking garage across the street. And you can watch them. Watch them while sipping your drinks. Your delicious cocktails from the best bar in Salem. And we're back. It's day three. Remember at the beginning of this video where I said this was gonna be like a low key, easy video to make? It was not, okay? <laughs> um, I have colored in all of the bats and we're gonna, we're gonna paint them now, okay? So you can see we've colored them all in, colored pencil, silver and blue, very simple. And then I'm gonna be uh, painting in, I think the wings I'm gonna do with like an indigo watercolor um, and then I'll probably go over the bodies with like a really light wash of blue 
And then I have this uh, interference acrylic that kind of has like a blue glittery sheen to it. So we'll do that over everything, okay? Let's get into it. And don't even mention the fact that this is Bristol paper and that I'm putting watercolor on them, okay? Because we're not gonna talk about it. We're not discussing that. There was a bat in our apartment one time. I think this is a cute story. I was sitting in the bedroom, and this was in our old apartment, the one that we moved out of. I was sitting in the bedroom, I think I was writing, and Mike was in the kitchen. And I heard him say, what I thought I heard him say was, bad in here. So I thought he was talking about Uma, that she was being bad. So I just kind of like laughed. And then he comes running into the bedroom and he's like, there's bat in here. And I was like, what? And he like shut the door. I think he brought Uma with him or she was in the room, whatever the case. Uma and me and him were like shut in the bedroom. And I like, I don't want to say I didn't believe him, but I had to see it for myself. So I went out into the kitchen and there sure was a bat. <laughs> the funny thing about it was actually that um, it was bigger than I expected it to be. And that old apartment was, also, was on the third floor. We're on the third floor now. That apartment was on the third floor and it had even more like slanted ceilings than this one. So all of the ceilings were, were like, you know, peaked. So the bat didn't really have a lot of places to fly. So it was bouncing around like pretty close to our heads. And uh, up close, it was quite large. So I was startled. I wasn't scared of it. Honestly, I just wanted to get it out safely and not accidentally hurt it at any point. I was more concerned about hurting it by accident. So we shot ourselves with Uma in the bedroom again, and we were trying to like think of a plan of like, what are we gonna do about the bat? Oh boy. You can see I, I open this with my teeth a lot, which is not recommended. I'm, I'm gonna go try something else. Give me one sec. All right. It looks like we're gonna be um, cutting it open because this is very sealed. Um, but you know what? I've had this tube of interference blue for like 15 years. So maybe it's time. Maybe I can even fold up the back and it will, uh, it will be okay. It will live on. Yeah, we're trying to figure out a plan of how we're gonna catch the back. So I had this like Halloween decoration hanging in the bedroom of a bat. And for some reason we thought we were gonna catch it like in Michael's laundry hamper bag, like, uh, like it was a giant net. So we were trying to like catch the, like practice, we were doing practice. We were trying to catch the Halloween decoration with the net, see if we can catch it. And honestly, once again, I was really worried about hurting it. So I felt like this was, this was not the plan. It was good in theory. Personally, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to open a window and then lock ourselves back up again and hope that it, it figured out how to get out. But. Uh, it was gonna be very difficult to know for sure if it got out that way. So I have to admit, not the most perfect plan. I had to kind of take charge because <laughs> Michael's Eastern European upbringing instilled in him a healthy fear of bats. <laughs> so I was kind of like going out and trying to find the bat here and there. And eventually the poor, poor sweet baby, he got so tired. He was just sleeping behind a uh, bundle of dried flowers that I had hanging on the wall. I found him sleeping behind a bundle of dried flowers, just exhausted. So I, at that point, we like devised this whole contraption. It's like box with like another box that we could slide under it, uh, cut like the flaps off the box and everything. I decided we're gonna, I'm gonna put the box over the dried flowers and capture him in a box and take him outside. So that's exactly what we did. But the one thing is that once the box was over him, he woke back up and obviously started to panic. So as we're going downstairs, like Mike's ahead of me opening all the doors and I'm behind him and I can just see his like little clawed 
like little bat wing claws like digging out from underneath the box and it was like he's gonna get out of this box like he was busting loose so i'm like behind michael and i'm trying to remain as calm as possible so he doesn't get get frightened that the bat is about to like fly out towards his head so he's like opening the doors ahead of me and i'm like don't worry let's go let's go and we got him outside and we we let him we let him free he flew away and all was well i feel like we did a good job when we caught that bat don't you <laughs> when we caught the bat oh yeah we did I mean, you did a good job technically i mean i was a coward that night <laughs> but you you helped me i helped from behind you. <laughs> well, you also helped devise the contraption to, to, to trap the bat. Yeah, after my idea, my first idea was like not good. What, the laundry, the yeah. laundry bag, yeah. That was... I imagine like a net, you know, like a butterfly net. Kind of yeah, it's just, I was too scared we were gonna hurt him. Yeah, I was more scared than you. I was scared that we were gonna hurt him. I wasn't scared of the bat. I was both, I was scared of both. Hmm. Um, do you remember what I said to you? I said to you, I like, there's, there's a lot of moments where <clears throat> I'm, I'm willing to be brave for you. And this is not one of them. <laughs> this is a moment where you're going to have to step up. Uh -huh. And, uh, if you can't, then I'm going to jump out this window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you kill the scary bugs, so. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I want yeah. you to step up for that one Yes. Yeah. So I could not handle. I got the bat. No. I wanted to keep it though. Well. <laughs> no, I'm just I kidding. Wouldn't let that <laughs> I'm just kidding. That wouldn't be nice for the bat. They don't want to be house pets. Although with a lot of wild animals, sometimes I think like they just don't know how good I'd make it for them. They would just like let me. I would pamper them. They'd have the life. Bats are covered in glitter. Now it's got to dry and then we'll come back and we'll cut them out. Yay! We have sparkly bats. Look at that sheen. It's cute. Now we have to cut out the bats and I made it super easy for myself by putting all of these pointy ears and uh, sharply defined points on their wings. So it's not going to be difficult whatsoever. <laughs> He's free. Isn't he cute? Look at him. He's all shiny. He's got such a nice shimmery sheen to him. Can you see him in the light? Oh, yeah. Cute. We have all our bats cut out. Now we gotta figure out what order they're going in on the garland. Now I always planned to have this one here. It's a nice big one, uh, the center. So he's gonna be in the middle. Uh, everybody else, that's up for debate. All right. I feel like I, I made them face in different directions. So maybe we should try to vary our directions here. So I think we're gonna do like this. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Can you see? How's that look? I feel like they look pretty balanced. Now I'm just gonna hang this baby up and uh, show you my finished mantle.
And there we go. Here is my Blue Moon Pisces Dreamy Mantle for my birthday, which is in just a couple hours because this ended up taking me three days instead of being a super easy, low key, chill video like I thought it was gonna be. Okay, I thought I was gonna do this all in a day, baby. So I guess this is not gonna work. You know, we're trying different things for when I'm on deadline, like I am now, trying to figure out how I can keep the videos coming, you know? Um, but this is not gonna be it. Uh, projects apparently don't make for quick and easy videos. So I guess we're gonna try something else, you know? Honestly, I think that doing research and writing an entire script takes less time than this. So I don't know what we're gonna end up doing. I'm gonna figure it out, but I have some cute plans for my birthday. And if you wanna celebrate my birthday, if you wanna get me something, you know what you can get is you can pre-order my book, Here Lies the Vengeful Bitch, which is coming out August 6th. I think you already know what it's about, but just in case you need a refresher, it's about a girl named Annie Lane who's dead, but she's not going quietly, baby. And she comes back from her grave to hunt down anyone responsible for her murder. If you wanna wish me happy birthday, just pre-order Here Lies the Vengeful Bitch. Did you see, by the way, that my book has an orange banner, like a top new release banner on Amazon because of so many of you guys pre-ordering it? That's a huge achievement. That's a big deal for a debut author like me. That, that's really, it's really great. So thank you guys so much for pre-ordering. Keep it up. Um, hopefully I'll have some news soon about pre-order campaign goodies so you can get like special incentives for having pre-ordered and uh, you know, my launch event and signed copies of the book that you can also pre-order, okay? All right, thanks for being here. I love you, bye.